welcome everyone to another lived quality conversation. I'm excited to be here today and I'm in conversation with David, who is um, a longtime friend of mine and we've had many conversations before uh, about all sorts of topics. Uh, so today we'll kind of do the same thing. Um, and I was thinking maybe we could start around the work subject. We've, we've had a bit of correspondence on work and and go from there, see where, it, where, where the conversation leads us. So yeah. David, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Clayton. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm really curious to see where you take this conversation. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about you uh, starting this and uh, I think it's really cool. So I, I, I'm ready, bro. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so we, we had a bit of a chat about work. Um, so I'll throw the question back to you, you know, like, what does work mean to you? And what is your work? Because uh, I know you do a lot of cool stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So what, what, what does work mean to me? Um, so as I had, uh, had said in the in the recording was it you know, immediately when you think of work, you think of like, you know, the stuff that you do for a living. Um, and that's like the stuff that you, most people don't want to do. Um, so that's, that's where my, my mind sort of goes to, you're doing it simply to survive. Uh, but if you had an option to not do it, you wouldn't do it. Uh, but then when you change the question to asking me, what do I feel my work is, then that starts to feel more personal. You know, it, it, it feels like it's something that you're, you're bringing into the world. Something for me, the word that comes out is legacy. Uh, so, you know, whether it's, you know, usually if, if it's like a religious thing, like you feel like you have to spread the word of God or, or whatever, uh, or, you know, your, your plan is to, uh, get people more connected from my case um it's um making african history more accessible um so i think that's sort of what it's evolved into um because when i first started uh so for those who don't know i have uh, an african history podcast and youtube channel um uh, and when i first started i was doing it because I was learning all these things about my culture and where I come from, and I was just excited and I wanted to talk to someone about it. <laughs> I, I wanted to share what I'd learned, um, and uh, I was just like, I really don't have anyone to like share this with. And I had listened to a few history podcasts, and I was just like, huh, why don't I just do the same thing? You know, start one and just you know, put it on, and hopefully you know, someone out there who likes it uh, will also listen. And yeah, that's how you and I connected. That's how you found me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it ended up becoming uh, my work and something that I'm doing to, uh, to, make, it, to make it easier to find because a lot of the information that I, uh, that I, I put out is, isn't so easily found. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, oh, that's really good. Um, and yes, like a few people I've been talking to, you know, legacy comes up. Uh, everybody's trying to see what is it that they they can do, and how do I call it? Like the thing they would want to still be here, even if they were still, even if they were not here, right? Yeah. So yeah, and and it quickly goes there, and and we do mix it up. Uh, with our jobs, um, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, I would think, I'd like to think, like the way for me I think about it is, uh, I've, I've used this definition before, like it's my, like my work is the, is what I do to cultivate my excellence. Uh, mm. And I think, I think that in my case, that's what I've found to do is like, it cuts across everything. It's like everything I'm doing uh, right. it, it sort of we we have uh, the bigger uh, category of work, um, mm. and then under that we have the jobs, right? And the jobs are going to be situational. It's like oh, I need to I need to make a living. I need to raise money right now, 
oh, I need to clean up, right? Um, mm -hmm. I need, you know, I, I have this other desire to explore this thing, right? I'm, I'm going right. to work on that. Uh, so, yes, I think it is, it is all encompassing and it's, it is all work. Um, and, and when you try to align it with, um, you know, with, uh, with legacy, like we've said before, it's it sort of, then it becomes much bigger because, you know, it's, it's something, you know, it starts to tie into things like purpose. It starts to tie into your values. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So all those things come into play. And, but, but usually like if somebody, you know, you, you meet up with a friend or maybe we jump on a call, right? Like, like this. And I go like, hi, David, how are you going? How's work? <laughs> right it's uh it's like the the quick thing is like you're gonna talk about the job and because yeah. that sort of like takes a big percentage um yeah. but it reminds me uh back uh you know in in uganda there's a especially in kampala there's that common phrase people use jebaleko yeah? mm. uh, or something like that like the it's like yeah the it encompasses it's like they, we know you have a lot of things you're doing uh, right how are they all going so i give you spinning plates how are you how is the spinning of your plates going right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i i hear that yeah huh yeah so so yeah it's, it's like yeah i mean i'm in complete agreement with that um uh, yeah so some something that you you've touched on there you you've mentioned your your podcast and and how you are seeking uh to learn more about culture um and you wanted to to develop that could do, do you mind sharing a, a little bit more about that uh that i wanted to learn more about the culture and and why yeah and why i wanted to learn more about it uh yeah. so <sighs> The way there's a number of like uh, incidents just sort of like led me to eventually getting there. Uh, it was not just one thing, but if I look back at all of them, it just makes sense that I would sort of end up where I where I eventually ended up. Um, I think I've always been someone who was um, because I, I I left Uganda and then came here. There was sort of like this. Um, uh, disjointedness that I felt, um, you know, coming to, I, like I, I left Uganda when I was 13, went to the States. And when I was in the States, you know, that's when I encountered, uh, the ideas that people had about Africans, you know, <laughs> and that sort of, uh, was like one of the things that began to push me in that direction. You know, like Africans were thought of as poor, Africans were thought of as dirty, Africans were thought of as, you know, slavery, not attractive, all those things. And it's just, we weren't cool. <laughs> we, we really, really weren't, weren't cool. Um, and it's quite interesting to see how that's changed now. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case like Afrobeats is like huge now, uh, you know, there's a huge uh, interest in, you know, in, in African history much more than it was when I first moved. Um, so that was like one of the things that like was, you know, was beginning to push me in that direction because um, I felt like I didn't really know where I was from. I felt like I needed to, like I needed to feel proud about where I was from, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I had to sort of find the things that would make me feel good about what it is, where it is I'm from, um, whether in terms of history. Um, initially, it was like comparing it to European history, uh, but <laughs> that turns out to, that, that turned out to be a mistake um because we are very 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 different um and that's okay uh, so meeting people's perceptions of what they thought Africa was in all the places that I went to outside of Uganda uh that had a very big impact on how I felt about myself 
uh, and how I felt about people, my ancestors. Um, no one seemed to know uh, where we came from. It just no one even seemed to care, <laughs> to be quite honest. You know, like it, it, it I, like one of the things that stuck out to me is like, oh, you know, I'm here in class and I can learn about, you know, European history from 18, 1800s back before Middle Ages, whatever. And I thought I was just like, hang on a minute. What, what were we doing? And like, no one knows. <laughs> and, and no one could tell me. Uh, and I could see how all these things... Uh, influenced the people who live here right you know like uh for the japanese people the samurai tradition and how it was ongoing for centuries and how it still like has a huge impact in their society today the whole knighthood and chivalry thing you know like all these elements from the past influence their current society but i didn't couldn't really see how that influenced our society today so that kind of all led me to eventually start exploring and start asking the question like i want to i want to know more <laughs> about where i come from yeah i don't i don't know if that uh makes sense for you yeah yeah no that 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 completely makes sense um and what like for me how i came across your podcast was uh, uh my son he he was um uh, getting through uh, what they call it, because uh, he goes to a local church, and he wanted to start taking communion, and so mm. they had this like little training program mm. uh, where we had to, I had to sit with him and uh, uh, explain what he's about to get himself into, right? And so mm. the the local pastor had recorded the three videos, which I was supposed to sit down and watch with him, and. Yeah. Uh, and explain, you know, at every one point, he would kind of like, uh, now, I pause at this point, have a discussion about yeah. what this means, right? And so, as we're talking through those things, uh, he started to ask about, you know, about where we came from, right? Like, he, he was asking about that. And, and I was explaining, you know, the, you'd say the modern... Uh, answers of like, no, look, we come from Uganda, it's, you know, it's over here, and this is what yeah. life is like. But he also seemed to be like after the, you know, the origin story, if I may yeah. put it that way, right? Like he really wanted the origin story. That seemed to be what he was interested in because um, he's trying to connect with, you know, you know, the, like the, uh, you'd say the Genesis story of like, you know, God creates the world and all this yeah. happens. Um, he wanted to see where he falls in that landscape, right? Mm. Um, so here I am trying to articulate. And then I was like, wait, I think we need to go even much further back, right? <laughs> like, right. <laughs> we need to go to the origin story because like I'm a Munoro and we have our origin story so yeah. maybe he needs to hear this. But then, like, wait, can I find it somewhere where I can reorient myself? Because, like, I remember the gist of it. Mm. Uh, but if I am to tell you, I, I don't want to mix things up, right? I don't, because, like, he's a child. He's going to take exactly what you give him as his basis. And so, yeah. so I started looking around for podcasts. And then... Um, I think there's one I landed on. I forget what it's called. It's um, it's run by a Kenyan team, and they do try to cover some of these things, but you know, it's still high level, right? It's like not enough detail because you listen to it and you're like, no, nah, you, I from the story that I remember, it's like you're missing this part. Is, so is, then, that, uh, is that the Afri Wetu one? Yeah, the upper way to one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was good. Like, but I think it's it's designed for like sort of like um you'd say a, a toned down version, right? Mm. Of the story. So they're just trying to give you highlights. It's like, yeah, then this happened and that happened and that happened, and that's how we end up uh in this situation, right? And mm. so 
I kept looking, then your one came up. And so when I started to listen, it was it was on point. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's I agree with this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with this. I want I want to hear more of it. So I listened I binge listened all of it. Wow. Yeah. And I remember one time um with you know, folding laundry and I turned it on and you know, my son listened for a long time and he's like, Oh really? That that's interesting. Like, he was really drawn in. It was like really yeah. interested up uh, in in the story, and to this day he still talks about it, like you reference it. Yeah. Uh, we we were watching uh, the there's that that show on Disney. Uh, uh, I forget the title, um, where they try to reanimate some of these uh, African stories and so right, like the one make you were telling me about right? Yeah, that one. And so yeah. uh, we watched with him, and and he could still remember. I was like, oh no, I remember that guy, that Indahora guy, the guy with cow, uh, the, the Kato guy, right? It's like, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, now they've taken the Kato idea and they've changed it this way. It's like, oh, that, that's super cool. So he could he could still yeah. relate and he could figure it out. And and I think what you did, like, sort of mm-hmm. like facilitated this. So. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think you thought it was going to facilitate it this way, right? <laughs> 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 but it did. Yeah. Uh, and so, so after I'd gone through most of that work, then I started to reach out. I'm like, wait, I, I, I want to talk to you. Like, you know, uh, let's, you know, I want to understand, you know, what's, mm. you know, what's behind your work uh, and how I can support the work. And, and yeah. so here we are, but uh, but yeah, it's like it's the 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 problem you are solving for is a real problem, especially if you've migrated uh, out of Uganda, and you find that out here these people have really invested in in trying to maintain a consistent relationship with their cultures, right? Right. Um, even if even if those those cultures are less potent. I would say, like, in my case, of course, I'm biased, right? I would say all the cultures I've met are less potent than my one because my one is definitely the best. Like, right, right. There's not going to be a better one than my one because it's the only yeah. one I really resonate with. Um, but I, I would say that I don't think we've done enough work about that, like, you know, from back home in Uganda. And I guess the kingdoms try, but there's still lots of opportunity um, to, you'd say, to modernize the information, to make the information more accessible, like like mm-hmm. really take advantage of all these advancements and upgrade our cultures to, right. to meet the modern needs. And I don't think uh, yeah. that that work is happening well. Uh, so I feel like what you're doing and what other people are doing around this space is really, really vital, and it's yeah. very valuable work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely say that uh, we, we're missing the the upgrade into. We're not taking advantage. You know, you've you've always said this, like they don't. We're not taking advantage of the modern forms of uh, of of really illustrating these stories um, in, in a sense that uh, like I, I'm, I'm remembering what uh, one, some, you know, some, some person, uh, one person who didn't really like what I was doing, he wasn't really interested. He was just like, ah, you know, those things are for our grand grandparents who cares to hear that. Um, and there is this association of it's not cool. It's not interesting. Um, you know, it's just people talking about cows, like who, who, who cares, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and that has a lot to do with us not uh, investing in trying to transform these stories into various ways, tra- changing them into like uh, different stories that uh, are based on the original thing but aren't, aren't actually the, the actual thing, you know, or putting them in songs, putting them in kids' television, putting them in books, putting them in coloring books, you know, dressing up as, as the warriors from the past, you know, uh, 
it, I, I think especially for uh for Africa in general, there is a strong I, I don't know if you felt this personally, but growing up I definitely felt like even our parents weren't exactly proud of our heritage. Okay, so and when I say that, I need to be very specific when I say, like, yes, they're proud of where they come from. Sure, they'll say, like, yes, I'm from Uganda, da da da, I speak Uganda, da, da that sort of thing. But I mean, like, that history part of, like, you know, our traditions, even going as far as, like, uh, religion. Um, when it comes to things like religion, they'll even, some will stop you right there and say, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> We're not interested in 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 going there. Like it's almost as if there's, um, for me, what I felt, and sometimes it was explicitly said, was that no, no, that's primitive, um, and now, quote unquote, we know better, and this is the better way, and we don't. There, there's, there's. I don't know if you, did you ever feel that way, like when you were sort oh, of yeah. growing up, like, or it was said to you in one sense or another, like it was you were made to feel like our history didn't quite warrant the same sort of uh, passion and desire that others, uh, you know, bring up. I don't know. Was that the same case for you? Yeah, it was very much the same. And I would say it's still, like, it's still something even to this day, like I, I have to, to walk through and walk with this, this, Thing that is instilled in you from a very young age that anything that you, you have to sort of like uh, raise up to whatever religious doctrine uh, your mm. parents uh, are engaging in and mm. everything else is is not it, it's kind of like it's uh, they'll probably use terms like it's evil right uh, so, so you'd, because um, I, I was raised Christian, so the, hmm. the whole notion was, and, and the funny thing is, right, like, growing up back in Uganda, you have all, you have all these other forms of religious engagement hmm. happening, right? Like, so you have the religious, uh, hmm. then you have what is going to be categorized as witchcraft, right? all the yeah. traditional healers, all the herbalists, and mm. you have all these in contention. Now, mm. for most, like, the other ones that we taint as witchcraft or as evil, uh, you know, the herbal uh, practitioners, why, you, so the question becomes like, why are they still prevalent in this modern age? Mm. If they're not relevant. And I mm. feel like the answer to that is, oh, they are really relevant. It's just the people who go to this religious enterprise and then they're not getting the healing through prayer or whatever. They'll go like, okay, cool. I still need to go see my, my herbalist. But we're not going to talk about that because we have to do it in secret, uh, <laughs> which is the shame you're, you're pointing out, you know, the, that hmm. shame of it's uncool. It's not something I can talk about. I'm not going to share it. So it's, it's something we live with, but we okay. don't talk about because it's not cool enough to bring yeah. out into the, the modern sphere. So we sort of yeah. like do this pretend religion and then um, go back to do our things. But the, the most ironic moments yeah. have always been uh, the weddings, right? Like, <laughs> it's so hilarious because uh, even for myself, because, like, I got married the same way. And at the time, it was so mind-boggling, so annoying, so frustrating. It's like, how <laughs> dare they make me do these things? Because you yeah. have to do... Uh, just sort of like expound on that. So you have to do, uh, you have to go meet the parents, right? Like if you're from, if you're from the same cultural groups, like I was fortunate, like the uh, my wife is from a very close cultural group as I am, and so mm -hmm. you know you have to go meet the parents. Then 
you know, you have to meet the aunties and they have mm. to vet you and assess you. And then the, they have like their cultural questions that they'll be asking sort of like about your lineage, trying to uh, suss out your, your, your blood lineage so that, you know, these, they're, they're minimizing intermarriage. And for the longest while, we're things like, why is this even a big deal, right? Like, why is the whole lineage thing a big deal until later you go to biology and they tell you, yeah, people of the same blood group, if, you know, like if you, if you have the same ancestry and mm. you mix that up, the children that come out of that will right. have uh, multiple mutations <laughs> and you don't want that because naturally nature yeah. wants to make difference. So right. you need to be seeking, you need to facilitate, you need to engage with it in a way that facilitates more difference. Otherwise, if you, yeah. it's, it's the whole basis of like, why incest is wrong it's it yes. is wrong but mm. it's also biologically wrong it's like it's lo- it's wrong on so many levels that bad things happen if you do that uh, mm. and and so traditionally like the, these people had this wisdom they knew about this and so they, they they put in place all these protocols all these processes to manage some of these things and yes. so you know you, you do all this and then, you know, you meet the aunties. Then you have to go then start preparing, you know, the the dowry to like really, you know, show your commitment, right? <laughs> and then, <laughs> then you'll have the, the the introduction ceremony and it's, it is how it is, right? You know, different cultures have different ways of doing it and they always have different, um, you'd say traditions and ceremonies that uh, and practices that they're doing in between there. There's a whole emphasis about the beer, the local, the locally traditionally made beer, because, you know, there's all these foods you have to try. It's like it's a big yeah. ritual, right? Yeah. Like a very big ritual of commitment. But then after you've done all this, uh, then you have to go do a church wedding or a mosque wedding <laughs> because now you also have to be more than because you know it's not gonna be sanctified if you don't do that. If you uh, don't. So you have to, yes, yeah, it's just kind of like you have to get married three times just to mm. be married once. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and when you explain it to people here, like you know, in, in the West, they go, like, What do you mean? It's like, you know, I met my partner, we went down to the court, and that's it. And then right. you, 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 they, you had, they had their wedding ceremony that, uh, that, that, that they were, yeah, it, it's so, it's so yeah, interesting. With a hundred guests or yeah. 50. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes just family, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I think from that, you can also see how, uh, we, you know, how our ancestors, um, held on to their traditions, um, even while embracing a new tradition, uh, you know, especially, uh, for Bunyoro, I, I remember, I forget, I forget his name, um, and, you know, this is definitely not uh, a politically correct to say today, but he called he called them <laughs> cultural schizophrenics um, because mm-hmm. uh, they, would partic- they would come to church or do what the missionaries were telling them to do. They would pray, da 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 do all that. But then they found out that they were secretly still doing their religions, which the British had outlawed. (laughs) And, you know, they were doing it in secret. And there was a sense uh, that even for those who had converted, uh, Mm. the missionaries were like, oh, they were so proud of themselves, patting themselves on the back, like, oh, my God, we've, we've converted these people. But when things weren't going right, sometimes the people would suggest to say, like, you know, you know what's really happening here? It's like, what? It's because we abandoned the old gods. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> and the missionaries were like, what? No, 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 no. It's, we, we need to pray to God. But, like, there was this, it was still there, right? Yeah. Uh, and when I read that, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> it, that our, our beliefs were still there even while embracing these, these, these new things. And I think that that dual marriage thing, is a perfect example of that. <laughs> Surprisingly, like, I find that the way sort of like, you know, say we participate now in retrospect, I see 
uh, the potency of what happens because it's like it's such a deep ritual um, and that it, it really puts you on the spot that oh wait so the commitment you're making it's mm. at um, it's like it's on multiple levels right so mm. it's like I met this lady you know we had a good vibe right like we we, we want to do the rest of our lives together it's like oh, wait now I have to negotiate with her aunties. It's like, what? You're not even going to be here. It's like, oh, no, they, they've raised her. So they know a lot about her that um, they they may see something that you're not going to, like, you, in your character, that mm. you will not be able to contend with the character that they've known this whole time. So it's right. important that they do their own vetting. But, like, mm-hmm. if you're on an app, right, like a dating app, there's none of that, right? No. <laughs> so it's like... There, there, there's, yeah, there's you're not... only gonna find out like five years later, and then it's like, ah, oh, it didn't work. It's like, yeah, I, I understand, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, nobody vetted this, right? And then no. even even during the ceremony, right? You you have all these, like, seriously, they are very, very. Uh, I compare them to like some shamanic rituals, right? Like mm-hmm. they're so. They bind you in such a, a practical way that even if you're not aware, there's all these smells, all these foods you're doing, all these dances, all these things you're doing, these rituals, that when you're done with that, you feel that now you have actually, it's like there's a new thing that has happened, right? Ah. And you're involved in it, right? Yes. And so it's not, you don't take it as lightly. Right, and mm-hmm. and so now it's like it, it's sort of like the, there's an there's a more nuance to this my thing. It's like look, I just thought I'd meet her and we'd do the rest of our lives together. Like no, <laughs> it's, like, it's like now uh, there's her family involved, there's her siblings, there's her uh, you know her yeah. parents' friends. My parents are involved. My parents' friends. It's like wow, yeah, this is something a big deal. Like why is everybody involved? It's like yeah, Absolutely. because we, we we don't want you to start reneging. In a few weeks from now, because like well, you need to be very clear what you're getting yourself into. I mean, <laughs> I don't, the, the charge thing is like, oh my god. <laughs> and it's, I think it's like it, you could compare it to like the the multiple pages of a contract that, <laughs> that this is they're binding you even more. Uh, I, I really think that that's a very good, uh, I guess, a very apt uh, perspective that you you have on this, where it's. It, they're showing you how important this is. You can't just like get out of it. You're like, hey, let me just sign my name here and we're married. No, no, no. What you're walking into is not just a union of two people, but also a union between two family groups, right? So you're meeting their aunts, you're meeting their uncles, you're meeting this and this, and there's various forms. Like even even when couples would decide to elope, right? They would still the elopement is still also part of the ritual <laughs> mm. <laughs> because uh, at least uh, in, in Busoga, I, I was reading that they, the couple would run away. And then I think after a while, the girl would come back and it's like, okay, so they were, they were why did they run away in the first? Like, Oh no, it's, it's all part of the whole thing. Like <laughs> part of the game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part, it's part of the whole dance. Uh, it's, <laughs> you're really entering into this family and your commitment to them has to be proven. You need to know that, hey, listen, when stuff goes down, like, you need to show up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 need, you need to show up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really quite interesting. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it is. And I think, like, for me, in retrospect, I find that you... You get to a place whereby you, your commitment is broader than just the two of you. So you know this is not just about the two of us who are getting married. This is mm. way bigger than us. And, mm. and because of that, I would say, like, and probably there's very many positives and very many negatives from that, mm. but... From what I noticed, right, like growing up, um, and even in, in my own relationships, even with my friends, you find that people are like those, these relationships are not 
you'd say broken by you'd say simple things like mm. no that doesn't mean they don't get broken right like it happens uh, mm. but it takes like, like there's a there's been a, a, a you'd say a long term deep commitment at, at mm. that level that even when let's say families don't work out for whatever reasons like even you do all these ceremonies and then you get together and then you know two three years later it doesn't work out somehow you see a member of the other family and they always account for you it's right like they, they, it's like you're their child now and um it doesn't matter if, if the relationship didn't work out you still belong to that family too now <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so, so yeah. there's no there's no easy getaway, and you could try to to let's say escape <laughs> that, mm. the, 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 the family, but they will always uh, like you have to work at it. It's not just gonna happen, right? It's not gonna no. be like oh I I woke up um I broke up with this person and I'm done goodbye. I'm no. never gonna starting a new life. Yeah. No, that's, that never yeah. works like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's interesting how like everyone would get involved to try to to keep the union together. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of like dimensions to that. You know, if there's domestic violence or uh, or whatever else, but everyone is invested in that union working uh, because. You, you can't just have everyone just <laughs> and, and yeah like one of the things was like if you if you know for women if they uh wanted to leave they had to pay back the bride price but even with the men when they would chase away the women uh because you know for whatever reason they didn't want them anymore i like i think there was they always like tried to negotiate for them to come back and and settle things in some way it, it's just yeah that binding like our family's already joined, bro. You're not running away from this. <laughs> yeah, it's like once once you're committed, that's it. You're locked in for life. Yeah. Uh, and 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 surprisingly, I think you when you look um, over in the West, it's a bit different. Uh, it's very very trivial, at least from what I've from what I've observed. Uh, you know how these kinds of relationships start and kind of like. People meet, uh, they date for a little while, they met like on an app, and then they dated for like, you know, a few weeks, and then all of a sudden they felt the vibe, and they decided, look, let's get hitched, and that's it. And then two years later, it's like, oh, no, it didn't work out. So we're, we're getting divorced. I was like, how do you even get to this level, right? It's like... Yeah, who maintains a marriage for just two years, right? I mean, it's like yeah. so all these things I find so bizarre. Like they, I'm like, wow, okay, this, yeah. Like when I hang out with some other friends from Uganda, we go like, yeah, that that would never happen where I come from, right? Like it's yeah. There's a few more steps involved, and and maybe things have changed now, right? Like you know, it's it's probably this fast, but I don't think so. I think. They still, it's still a multi-step process, right? It's still, mm. it's still more nuanced um, uh, th than what I, I've, I've come to see here. But leaving yeah. that aside for a bit, like uh, mm. coming back to the to the coolness aspect, right? Like mm. uh, you you touched a bit there, like you know when we're growing up, uh, there's um, there wasn't that celebration of like it was there, but not. It's a not in a in an in depth way. And and what I mean by that is like for example here, you see schools, um, they run I think book weeks. They run something like a book week, uh, and there'll be like a whole week where children are encouraged to bring their favorite story books and dress up as the characters, right? Mm. And and I'm wondering, it's like oh wait, look, you know you have to you know, get the popular Disney characters or whatever, you know, your Elsa's and whoever, Anna's and, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then you have to look at, you know, all these uh, Marvel superheroes, you know, all those guys, the Star Wars characters. And, and it's great. It's lovely. But the question that still, like I still, like, the thing that I long for, I'm like, wait, well, how about our own 
characters from back home, right? Like, how do we celebrate those, right? Like, how do we, um, are we telling our own stories? Are we, are we writing them down? Are we making artifacts? So are we reinventing those artifacts? Are we upgrading the culture? Uh, so that leaves, that always leaves that taste in like, I wish, right? Yeah. I wish we had this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and we and unfortunately we um, I, I think when it comes to the coolness thing is that mm. I would also add that we compare our stuff to uh, the Western stuff or to other cultures that are sort of quote unquote cooler uh, because of how they've been portrayed in various forms. Um, mm. So if you're comparing uh, you know a knight to uh, an African spearman, it's just not quite the same, right? So the, the, they have the armor, and like it, it takes on various forms. Like, look at Lord of the Rings, right? I don't know if you have you ever read Lord of the Rings, uh, but yeah, basically, I this. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you watched it a few days ago. No, 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 I've, oh. I've, I've watched the movies, yeah. <laughs> the movies, right. But, but, but you see yeah. the whole concept of it is based on a medieval kingdom, right, which is, yeah. you know, a rehashing of, of uh, a version of European history uh, just in a different world. Uh, so that's that sort of thing. Like, people get engaged into that story. And some of these characters are based on real-life characters or, you know, like they uh, they take inspiration from them. So we, we see that over and over and we read these stories we read lord of the rings they're like oh my god aragorn is really 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 cool he's a knight with a sword but have you ever seen a story about a, an african spearman no <laughs> you, you haven't uh so you're not mm -hmm. like going to feel like it's cool because you've never seen it be cool um you, you're you, you know so, so people have to start taking those our stories and transforming them into other other aspects for them to start to take on a life of their own and to start being cool. I think Black yeah. Panther is a really great example of, of how uh, they, they've done that, you know, uh, that like people are really into Black Panther, the Dora Milaje with their spears and, and all like, man, when I first started, like when I first moved, that stuff wasn't cool at all. Like Black Panther, yeah, started in 1965, but the whole aspect of spear, like sometimes some people call me spear chucker. Like it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it just wasn't cool. And you didn't want to be, there were a few Africans who I'd met who were just like, I don't, they pretended like they weren't African. Um, and I get it. I, I, I understood it because you just felt like we don't really have that. We didn't really have that coolness factor to, to us, which is, not true there are a lot of like interesting stories that we oh man the things things i i read and i'm just like i can't wait to like change this into something this is super cool uh you, you mentioned um like like you know dressing up as elsa or dressing up as like a historical character uh we don't even know our own historical characters like in specific uh specifically for uganda when we talk about Ugandan history, I felt I felt like people were far more interested in the 20th century uh, than they were in the period before that. And mm. I guess because uh, maybe it's far more relevant, uh, but people will really be hard pressed to tell you anyone else other than Kabaka Mutesa, uh, uh, the first of Buganda. And maybe Kabalega. Mm. But beyond that, mm. can you name any other one in Uganda? <laughs> it's like and and stuff like that, I'm just like, that's not good. That's really, really, really not good. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? There can't have only been two. Uh so there's I, I have so many things planned that um, I would like to do this year to be able to bring more visibility to those people, even though I don't know much about them. But hey, maybe you could take that character and you could expand on them and you could, uh, you know, do something cool with that. You know, I, like, let your imagination run wild. Because uh, I'm going to let mine run wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
No, that, that, that would be great. Like, I, I, I feel like we need to... These are things that should be happening, like, in schools, you know, like, running, mm. like, competitions, uh, you know, asking, you know, people to tell stories about their, you know, their, their traditions, uh, mm. make art, right? Like, um, you know, it, it's in the creative space that you get to reinvent um, the dead artifacts, if I may put it that way. And I mm. think one thing like that and, and we do blame a lot of of on this uh we blame a, a lot of this on colonialism but i think it's a it's a crutch i think we're we're overdoing it because yeah um <laughs> you, you, you don't feel like it happened. <laughs> look it, it happened right like it happened uh some some merchants or enterprises were interested in plundering and pillaging. They did. Uh, great. They tried to pitch whatever they had and they left, right? <laughs> so there's still responsibilities. Like, okay, these guys came. I mean, you've seen this. You've had this in the stories. Like, Villagers used to go to war all the time, right? Like there would be an aftermath. Oh, they burnt down the, the huts and they 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 destroyed this little village because it lost the war, uh, and they they enslaved the uh, the population. But then the little kids grew up and they rebuilt the, the city and started over. It's like mm. where's the rebuilding, right? Like when. Oh. When do we get to that, right? Oh like, when God. do we start to do that? Dude, you, <laughs> you saying that just reminded me of something. Um, <clears throat> mm. It's on Twitter. There's this guy called uh, uh, Culture... Is it Culture Critic? Uh, but he, he posts these pictures of, uh, uh, of, of these uh, architecture uh, from Europe. Uh, so he had like a thread of uh, a building, a famous building, that was bombed during World War II. Um, and then he, ha he would ha follow it up with another picture of that picture having, of that building having been re rebuilt. Um, and I was looking at this and I was like, huh, huh, huh. I was like, where, to back to what you're saying, where's our rebuilding? You know, in, in sort of like taking the initiative to try to find what we can salvage from the ash you know some of the buildings like yeah they rebuilt it one for one but in other cases they made upgrades to them right so they still kept the cultural heritage uh but it was updated with with, with certain things they made certain changes so mm. where's our <laughs> update uh for, for those where where's our rebuilding that's that's a really oh my god i'm so glad you touched on that point <laughs> Yeah, look, I, it, it's true, like, you know, because I, I wonder, like, isn't this why they, you know, we maintain the monarchs, right? Like, and maintain them to to hold the space for the culture. Because I think at some point uh, they had abolished them and then they, they brought them back. And, and I think that's great. Like, hmm. and probably, like, I'm not well versed on the works. Of the kingdom, so I am speaking with a lot of naivety here. Um, but I'm wishing we could see more of it. Like I'm wishing it was more out there, and 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 probably this is like an opportunity for us, right? Like to like we're sensing this this gap. We're sensing uh, these opportunities. It's like oh, maybe we reach out to the kingdom officials and make these proposals about these projects that could all help with that rebuilding, that mm. uh, updating of the culture and uh, modernizing it. Because I feel like it's highly, it's undermined, yet it's such a strong, uh, you'd say potent, you'd say source of identity because when, if you ask me who I am, first I'm going to tell you the tribe I come from, right? Yeah. 
before I even, well, I'll say I'm a Munoro from Uganda, right? Yeah. <laughs> First I am a Munoro, then I'm from Uganda. Then you're from uh, Uganda. Yeah, I, and it's, it, it, it's like, but that's starting to fizzle out, right? If you ask my son, you probably not say that. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. He'll say something different. Um, but I think we need to make it cool, like you said before. We need to. We need to reconnect and 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 re. How do I put it? Like reanimate it in such a way, uh, because when you when you look at what is being done um, in these, let's say, developed cultures or developed societies, it's there's a there's a big connection to the past, and most of the current problems that are being solved in these modern societies or or you'd say first world countries have to do with the past. Like, for example, you know, Australia, they recently ran a, a referendum to try and um, create a parliamentary, uh, you know, committee. I don't know if it's a parliamentary committee, but they, they called it the one voice. They wanted to put in place this body uh, in parliament that is made up by the indigenous um, people to sort of like run past them. Uh, mm. the the laws that are coming into play, right? Like all these bills, so that they can review and add a cultural perspective. Because mm. now the the science realizes, like, oh wait, when we came in and we plundered and pillaged and we decimated the uh, indigenous people, we along with that we decimated the culture and the identity of this place. Uh, that is not a good thing. We need to. Kind of like the, the rebuilding, like we need to polish it up. We made a mistake. All right, okay. How do right. we fix it? Right? Like we, we need to start rebuilding it and and recovering and apologizing. And so there's a lot of that. Like you you'll see even in in, in America, there's probably a lot of the things to do with uh. There's more about the the slave trade things and things related to that, uh, which was huge there. But it it was a huge injustice that. Now, retrospectively, they feel they have to do something about, and mm. and it's like all this modernization, all this advancement has now come back to this point of like, oh no, you need to go back to the start, <laughs> to the origin, to fix these identity crises and problems that you find the modern people struggling with, uh, the, the 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 mental health crises, all these, uh, you know. All these modern problems that mm. these countries now have to deal with, mm. which they thought they didn't have to deal with at first, like, oh, look, if we just put in place enough, uh, a, a, you know, a, a way for everybody to make a living, everybody should be fine, right? It like, if we fine. organize it systematically in this way, it should work. Yeah. Great. But then the people lost the spirit. <laughs> 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 like, as, <laughs> It's like, oh, now we have to rebuild in the spirit. How about if we do all these things? Can it, can it not come back? Yeah, it's not as potent. We yeah. have to go back to the origins. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in their rebuilding processes, are they, is it just for the indigenous Australians or are they sort of including the entire nation to like learn about um, uh, what, what what happened as well? Or is it just... Oh yeah, it is. There's a lot of um, education as well, and um, but a lot of practices. Uh, if, if you may have listened to anything that involves like an Australian official, uh, an, an Australian official ceremony, you will hear this declaration about the acknowledgement of the land of the traditional owners, uh, mm -hmm. where the thing it's 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 in everything. It's now part of the local identity, right? Like. Okay. Uh, People will even just randomly say it. <laughs> I probably should have said it at the beginning. <laughs> yes, I, I think I think I'm very similar here in Canada as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's it's now it's it's now become a cool thing to acknowledge the land of the traditional owners because it used to be a practice in the in the local tribes, uh, at least from from what I've I've heard how it came to be. It's like if oh. um yeah, if there was a meeting going to be held anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. There had to be an acknowledgement of uh, they had to get permission from the local elder, right? Mm-hmm. To allow mm. them to have a meeting there, uh, mm. like a gathering, <laughs> uh, and then, then they had to acknowledge that oh. they were having this meeting on somebody else's property, <laughs> really? right? And and give respect and give appreciation, and mm. then it's kind of like when they did that, it's like part of the ritual. It's like when they did that, then this. Uh, this meeting, this event was going to be blessed. In, so, right. To put it in that way, right? Otherwise, if they didn't do that, then bad things may happen. Things may not go right. And if things do not go right, that's one of the things that questions like, did you do the acknowledgement? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, no, we forgot. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah that's, that's why things are going wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. That's That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I need wow. I need to I need to get my my facts checked on that one. But but it's yeah. something like that. It's something oh. akin to that. <laughs> yeah. And so now you have it, it's a cool thing now. Like you know to acknowledge the the land of the traditional owners is a mm-hmm. cool thing to do in Australia, right? Like uh, mm-hmm. having the the dot paintings because that, that used to be their traditional artwork. Uh, mm-hmm. So now. Don't paintings are really, really pricey and they're like a cool thing to have and you see the trains are coated in them, the all government buildings uh, try to have uh, one of those paintings uh, and they all all these paintings come with like a little story of the place where it happened and uh, what, what it depicts, uh, right. all the symbolism. And so the, yeah. the culture, the, the local art is starting to get elevated. And, mm. and you have uh, storybooks, children's storybooks written in the in the native languages, starting to become more and more popular uh, to sort of promote the language, uh, mm. but also stories of those local, you know, like lo- stories of local heroes, right? Starting mm. to take mm. off and being published more in in books and fr- right from the children's level, like ch- children's storybooks to novels and and biographies. And, you know, and things like that. And, and so you see that a lot of work is going in to reanimate and, and reinvent these cultures. And, of course, it's a thing that everybody's pitching in. And so it's actually happening to a point whereby it's visible. Uh, and, of, uh, and so in the local discourse, the, the communities are responding to this, right? Like there's lots of conversation about that. It's a normal thing. Uh, it's not like it's no longer a taboo thing. It's no longer an uncool thing. Now it's a cool thing. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. And you know, they, 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 it seems like they're putting a lot of effort into uh, resurrecting it and bringing it to the forefront. I, I hope it works. <laughs> um, it, it, I, think it, it, I think it's working already. <laughs> yeah, at the very least, because like all these things I'm talking about, I've noticed. I've not researched this stuff. This is all stuff just I've, I've just seen. You just I'm pretty good. sure. Yeah. Yeah, like you know, you you see it there. You see it happening over here. You sit on a bus and it's this. There's this piece of information. There's flyers. Uh, you hear people talking about these things. This is just in common life. Uh, because I, I I've, I've not been researching about this. But even mm-hmm. in unis, uh, even at school. Um, you know, my son would come back and start telling me the story of, oh, they were teaching the history of the local people, uh, how how the Aboriginal people started, how they would figure out how to find food, how they would grow their crops, uh, hunting, like teaching about all that at that level. Uh, mm. You know, even at uni, they, they, they will run these mandatory courses whereby you're meant to learn about that the, the Aboriginal people and mm. know what happened to them and their way of life. It, wow. In some places of work, uh, you have uh, a training program that is mandatory that you mm. have to watch before you start working there so you can 
you, you, you can be educated in that way. So there's a lot of education happening. And it's not, you, I would say it's not forceful, but it's, um, we're being bombarded by the information. And in the process we're learning, we're starting to appreciate. We're like, oh, okay, I really, I didn't want to learn about this right now, but because I'm required to, or I'll listen to it. And then in the process of listening, it's like, oh, I, I, actually, that, that was interesting. Normally, yeah. I'm not going to seek listening to this. Right. <laughs> now that I've got the chance, here's all the cool stuff that I learned, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, so is yeah. it like con consistent or it, or do they do it like relegated to a, a specific month like they do with Black History Month? Uh, they do have, I think, like a month similar to that. Uh, at least what I remember during that month, they will put out uh, like folk tales for, for bedtime stories and other materials that you know, you can just download and they'll, they'll make like these clips of, um, uh, you know, an elder telling a story to children. And so you can just play it and watch it with your children and they'll, right. you get to participate in that, which is really cool. Cause I'm like, wait, what about us? What about our stories? So I would want them to, I'd want to be sitting like... here with them and we're watching our folk tales, right? It's like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. You know? Yeah, it's one big happy family, right? Like we we'll watch this. Right? Yeah, <laughs> they, they did the work, right? They did the work. It's like yeah, and, and, how about and, we and go that, back and make our own? <laughs> exactly, and and that's and that's what we like. We need to do like um, you know, there's there's all kinds of people that uh, I think that we probably need an initiative like that to be able to pull it off. Um, there was a on YouTube. Uh, there was an animation studio, a Ugandan animation studio, that was actually adapting. I don't. I think you found. I don't know if you ever found them, uh, but they were adapting those uh, Bunyoro folktale stories into like an animated thing um, with a narrator and everything. And I, I remember thinking this was like so cool, um, and they just stopped releasing episodes. Uh, kind of like I guess what happened to me, <laughs> um, but. I was speaking to someone who uh, reached out to me and he was like, yeah, like I saw that and I reached out to them to figure out what happened. And apparently they ran out of money and they couldn't find anyone to help them get this stuff back on the road. But they're an example of people that need to be supported. Right. Because they were, they, what they were doing was amazing. Like they, I, <laughs> It's it's very unfortunate, like you know, trying to show that to like you know I don't know the Uganda Tourism Board or or educational Uganda Education Ministry. They'll probably look at that and be like, eh, you know, who cares about that? Why 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 should we give you money to get this on the road? Um, mm -hmm. So it seems like what we need to do is to sort of drum up that um, that desire that desire to reconnect with the past, that, that, that strong, almost like a cultural revolution uh, where people mm -hmm. really need to uh, feel like, I wanna, I wanna know where I come from. I wanna feel more connected because a lot of these countries feel that way. Man, we can talk about Italy and how they feel about their culture. Their culture from just the language they speak to the food they eat. Um, <laughs> They're very, very, very like passionate about their stuff, um, and I feel like we're missing that passion. Um, I, I don't know how we can inspire it even more, um, but we we need we need our leaders to be just as passionate about it. Be like, all right, like seeing someone do something cool like that. How can we invest in you to get you to complete that series? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I I think. I think the passion is there, like, you know, because, like, you know, speaking like us now, right now, we're talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. So the passion is, like, this very conversation, right, is proof of the passion. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the guys whose studio got closed down, you know, that's proof of the passion. I think the passion is there. The pockets of the passion are there. Mm -hmm. And I think people are trying what they can. 
however, I feel like the courage is missing and the encouragement needs to come from let's say these kingdom groups like this kingdom they don't need to even invest the money because people are already doing that people are investing their time people are investing their money it's like mm. we want to do something about this right it's like mm. all they have to do is get up and say and hold the space for this creativity and say look we appreciate all the work that's happening in this space Please mm. keep doing more. We're very happy about this. You know, take mm. some of this created content and mm. maybe endorse it or, or ask their subjects or the people, the, the, the members of these tribes to actually refer to this material that is being generated by themselves. Mm. And that's, that is the least they could do. <laughs> but the problem is they're not even aware that this is happening. They're not looking out to find out because, you know, there's probably many reasons. I, I, I don't want to speculate. Um, but I feel like that is the least they could do. Like the encouragement would be enough to, to even hold a space for it, to make it a reality and say, oh, yeah, actually, right. there's a movement rising up. Here's a pocket of people trying stuff, and mm. we acknowledge that that's a reality. And yes, uh, that's enough for people to bind together, set up like a foundation, get an investor, and actually yeah. get a lot of stuff done. All they need to do is endorse it and yeah. say, we see you, we like it, it's cool what you're doing, keep doing it. But they're not <laughs> even watching. And so that's why you kind of go like, ah, oh, I wish they could say it's kind of like if you if, if you if you buy a toy for your child, right? And, and yeah. they don't play with it, you get demoralized. You go, ah, oh, mm. they they didn't like it. They didn't like yeah. it. I wish they could just play with it, right? Yeah. And, and in this case, it's reverse, right? Like maybe the children are playing with the toy and trying to signal, you, hey, look, we love this, and you go like, nah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah i'm not interested <laughs> I, I i definitely agree with you like that's the least they could do like that endorsement would would go so so far um but it, unfortunately it's like not even it doesn't seem like they um because and i'm going to give you an example of, of, of this happening um so i i think i may have shared with you the instagram page of this um there's this uh Gunna guy. I met him through like through the podcast. He was a listener as well. Uh, but he has this page where he posts all these pictures because he works in a, in a museum. Mm. Um, so like he talks a little bit about what's in in the picture and you know about all these kingdoms. It's very very like interesting stuff. Um, mm. So he had told me that he reached out to uh, the kingdom of Bunyoro uh, about returning like facilitating or beginning the process or talks about returning uh, uh some of the artifacts that were taken mm. um but i think he's from when i last spoke to him he was like no one really got back to me and <laughs> it's like you, you know you know what i'm saying uh, you know here's someone who's like hey like i work in a museum you know uh, maybe we can start something, you know, and people aren't really. Yeah, it's just <laughs> they're not keen. <laughs> you just and and I, I think for for them sometimes it could be that it's it could be a lack of imagination. Um, it could mm. be that some of the people that they're talking to don't have can't see the vision yet. Uh, mm. So unless it's bringing money, they're not interested. Yeah, which is like I also tried to do the same thing with what, what I'm doing. I'm like, hey, like maybe I can make some videos for like specific cultural places and try to pitch it through the uh, Ugandan Tourism Board. Wow. <laughs> they were like, no. What did they tell you? <laughs> um, they basically said <sighs> they gave us a runaround um, and it became clear that they weren't really interested in doing it uh, because they didn't want to have to pay us to do, to, you know, to fund this thing. They were just like, ah, uh, you know, 
it, it, it's like the, they, the whole thing became so frustrated. Um, and I found out through another person that, oh, actually, they're not really interested in doing this. Um, and what they're doing is that they're just trying to, it's, it's a no, but they're not going to tell you no. <laughs> that in this sort of thing, they have to have the interest for themselves. But because you're coming to them, they're just, there's no really, there's no desire to do this. <laughs> because they can't take credit for it, I, I guess. I guess maybe credit, but I also think money is a thing. Like, yeah, there, there was a strong sense of like, there were also some individual actors who wanted to benefit themselves. Um, mm. And how I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it as like a cultural thing. Like, oh my God, what I'm doing could really benefit everyone. That's not how they're seeing it. They're thinking, mm. hmm, can I make money from this? No? no. Eh. <laughs> I'm not really. But this, you know, like, but this leaves me um, wondering, you know, like, if you've heard of, uh, I think this is what's common, like in the in the Buganda culture, the whole Bulunji Wansi, you know, way of living, where they would uh, gather the village gathers to uh, clean up the road and do the trenches and then clean up the well and just oh, sort of like like yeah. like a social grooming uh, r- repeated. Uh, you'd say routine that would happen on a weekly basis. They, they mm. had a drum for it, like you know. Mm. Uh, in Bunyoro, we had one as well. They called it um, Kangabaije. So it's like they, they, they would every time you'd hear that that sound of the drum, everybody mm. knew it's like, oh, it's time to go do the the community chores. It's like, oh, all right. It's like oh, I, I grew up in a time where where this was a real thing. Yeah. Really, this is like. Oh, I, I I've never heard about this. So yeah, yeah, you should you should look up. It's called uh, Kangabaije. It's a it's a it's a community uh, hmm. drum. It's it's common in the West, like in Bunyoro, in Toro. Like hmm. it's a certain sound of a drum. I don't remember it properly, but like you you'd you'd hear that drum. It means like uh, it's like a community alarm. Uh, hmm. You need to gather. Uh, usually, if it happens a certain day at a certain time, everybody knows what it means, what that is for. It's like a, it's like a communal reminder of like, oh guys, this is uh, this is the time we go every Saturday to clean up the well. So right. They would have those wells and they needed maintenance, so they would, the the local leader would organize the ringing, the, the drumming. So the drum would happen. It would happen mm. for like maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then people. Would, would gather at the well and clean it up, right? Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's like, these are like your things. Like, even, yeah. even in Uganda, like, I remember when we lived there, like, this would happen. Like, they would, there would be a thing that happens, and before you know what's happening, oh, we're cleaning the road. Uh, you little ones pick up the, the trash, and the, the elder ones are going to get here yeah. and sort of like, clear out the trenches, and it's going to be a nice clean thing. Or maybe it's a thing to go work on the church or something. Like, those yeah. these communal calls that would happen and you'd get together to to do community work. And mm. so I'm, I'm thinking, like, maybe we, we, sort of like the societies, like even us, right? We, we need to start sort of like doing such a thing. Like, uh, maybe we can start small, like, create, say, whatever, like a platform somewhere on the social media and get mm. people to gather together. Like, you know, gather creators who are interested in creating content that modernizes the cultures and, and, and reinvents them. Uh, because there's a lot of brilliant minds out there. There's, there's mm. cool stuff people know how to do right now. It's like, if you put these people together, and give them such a problem that they are, you'd say, intrinsically motivated to address, right? It's like, yeah. this is like an identity thing. It's like, no, 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 I am that. So I yeah. would want to contribute to that. And so you you could you could see a lot of interesting things come out of that. Um, yeah. And I think, 
I think that needs to happen, right? Yeah, I, I I like that idea, the Kangabai J idea. Is that uh, is there a, is a historical basis for for the drum? Is that how they used to do things in the back in the day when they? I think I think so. You not need to look into it because you're the history guy. It's because the drum. Because <laughs> the drum. I I know it for the drums of war. Uh because I yeah. know, like when, when it uh, for for Bunyoro, there was a specific drum beat that they would play, uh, what yeah. to get, have, gather people for war. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know that they also did it when it came to gathering for community events. Um, yeah. I haven't, yeah, like I haven't come across any such information. But I, I'd be curious to like, you know, like where can I find this information so I can read about it? Because that's that's really really <laughs> cool. It's like it's like a school. No, it is. You know, like yeah, it, it's like a school bill. It's like a yeah. school bill, but no. Yeah. And and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of drumming, uh, you'd say signals that were being used. Uh, and in some, like if you go to some of the villages, like you find some of these things still happen, probably less. Like like the church drums, you know, like mm. in the west they have the church bells. We had mm. church drums. Uh, mm. You you. It's like, oh, the, the service is about to start, or maybe the bishop is going to come to the local church, mm. and then you'd hear a whole set of drums go off, and it's like, mm. yeah, I think the bishop is arriving. Let's head there. Yes. And so yeah. there are all these, uh, rudim- you, you'd call them rudimentary uh, ways of communicating, but they, they work. They were efficient. Like, you know, <laughs> sound is, yeah. it can travel fast. Yeah, they, over long it, distances. Exactly. <laughs> and you, when someone banging a, is banging a drum on top of a hill, you know, you can hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And partly that's why kingdoms were always <laughs> the, the the palaces were always sitting on top of a hill. Yeah, it was it was yeah. a great way to because, communicate, and you know, yeah. yeah. I, I think so. So what you're saying is that uh, we need to find a way to um, sort of like send out a signal, uh, or even a signal coming from the from the kingdom itself. Uh, that yeah. sort of brings everyone, <clears throat> as you were saying, like calling attention to it. Uh, you know, the, the challenge is getting them to see that vision. You need convincing them of like why this is important and it goes beyond monetary compensation. Uh, and, you know, the, this can go a long way in terms of uh, creating more uh, loyalty to to the mm. group, right? Um, you know, I, I think that's that's definitely a challenge that we can overcome. But um, you know, having that platform may be a, a good place to start because um, that definitely that guy, that guy's page comes to mind. I, I think you should definitely talk to him as well because um, okay. he his I, I I I'll resend you his page. But his page is super cool. Um, he collects all these pictures and uh, he's also passionate in his own way <laughs> mm. and yeah we need we need it's kind of like we need to start honing and gathering that passion and then mm. channeling it in a way that can because mm. i think it's all over the place but if we could mm. just gather it and point it at one spot then we can it can start to make an impact and mm. and probably that's the impact that's going to get the attention of you know the kingdoms and 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 give that example that, you know, inspires people to not be chained down to the institutions, like the expectation of the institutions. Like, oh, yeah, I wanted to do this, but I'm waiting for the kingdom. Well, hey, hey look, these guys did something. And so I have this, this vision, it's like, where we get together, do something. It's so cool that the, the kingdoms jump on board. They're reaching yeah. out to find out, what? what is going on, right? Like, how can yeah. we be a part of this? And, yeah. and then, you know, that reversing it, I think that is what, that, that movement is what is necessary. But yeah, it, it takes a lot of effort and yeah. collaboration. But I think, you know, you start with one person, connect them to another one, and then they become three. And then before you know yeah. it, there's five. And yeah, it, 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 it keeps going. Keep growing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I have a... <laughs> 
I, I'm reminded of a of a question a friend of mine asked me recently, and I'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say about this. Um, yeah. So as you know, February is, is Black History Month, right? Um, mm. So, what what are your thoughts on this initiative, on uh, Black History Month? as it exists. I don't know how it, how it functions in Australia, um, but what, what do you think about it? What, how effective do you, do you feel it is uh, to have a month dedicated to Black history? Well, I think, well, I think it is something that is, um, you'd say like it, it solves a certain desire, right? Like it holds a space for, you know, people who are identifying in this cultural way, right, to connect and celebrate it, right? At least that's how I think about it. It's like, oh, we're getting together and we're Mm -hmm. celebrating as black people and, you know, we'll do things that celebrate our culture. At least that's how I interpret it. Now, Mm -hmm. uh, there's many other interpretations. (laughs) I'm not going to go to those ones. but for me, that's how like I really take it. I think it's all about celebrating the the culture, all the the culture that was lost, all um, the things that we still yearn for, that we want, um, we don't want to get lost in the crux. So mm-hmm. we 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 would like to use that as a, an opportunity to reemphasize that hey we still care about this stuff and to show how much we care about this stuff here's how we're celebrating it um Mm -hmm. kind of similar to like you know independence days it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. a a country taking a stance of like hey we're still this country and we're cool country and look how long we've been this country for right (laughs) uh but it's you know right. a country would a country would have to do that right like yeah uh, but I think it's more like um, a social endeavor to allow people who are identifying within a group to celebrate mm. that which they identify as at least that's right. how I see it is it how it is <laughs> how is it for well, you I I think um. I, I agree with what you what, what you said. I think that you've, you've you've put it in a very eloquent way. Um, I, I think that uh, my friend who I was speaking to, I guess he was coming from the perspective of feeling like um, it can sometimes come across as a bit trivialized uh, by all these the way he, it rubbed him the wrong way. The way all these companies come out like as soon as February first hits, you know, it's like oh my God, why can't stream mode support support Black voices? And then as soon as the twenty eighth comes and it, and is gone, it's just like zoop, it all <laughs> it all just disappears. <laughs> and you know, it, it it just feels very uh, cheap and empty uh, from his perspective, and it's just like. Ha! Huh, I wish there could be a bit more than just a month, um, mm. where it's sh- you know they show more of a commitment towards uh, Black history in general, um, yeah. instead of just being it. It's become commercialized, almost like Christmas, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, as, when you're sharing that, I was thinking about Christmas, uh, especially here in the West, and and I think it's really you'd say a capitalistic consumerist mm. uh, way of uh, celebrating these things um, in that it's, it's very time boxed to the point, And then we move to the next thing, right? It's mm. like, oh, you had your time, get out, get off the stage. Uh, we're going to yeah. go deal with other things now. Right. Cause like yeah. this, this is so bizarre, especially with Christmas. Right? Like, like, um, Everybody starts talking about Christmas, like, you know, a couple of months before, you know, the Christmas sales or something, or even longer. Mm. But then, here's the weird part. Like, at the end of Christmas, of Boxing Day, like, right after Christmas, after Boxing Day, mm. then, on, that would be the 26th, on the 27th, there's mm. going to be hot cross buns on sale 
in the local grocery stores. And in, in Australia, what that means is like, oh, we've switched now, it's Easter season. Because oh. they, they, when they don't bake the hot cross buns until the 27th. The moment yeah. is 27th, then they start putting out the hot cross buns and taking down the Christmas deco. And yeah. then it's like, all right, great. Christmas is done. Let's talk Easter. Easter. You know, Easter yeah. sale. Let's start thinking about the Easter eggs and uh, the hot yeah. cross buns and all that. It's like now we're talking about different merchandise. We're looking at it from a, a capitalistic perspective. It yeah. does make sense. It's like, oh, we're just, we're just turning the aisles over so that you can now focus on these other goods and mm. switching out the products to just keep you consuming. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's definitely what it is. It's, it's a capitalistic thing. And I, I, I see where he's, he's coming from. Um, I don't, I, I don't know what can be done about it because it seems like it, it just happens with everything. Um, mm. But I will say, like, you know, if you're a company that's uh, saying that you care about uh, Black voices, then definitely keep that same energy 24-7, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, it, it, it leads some people to feel like um, maybe we just – the problem is that we shouldn't have a month. Uh, so I think, was it famously Morgan Freeman who was like, oh, have you noticed that white people don't have a month and why do we need a month? And, <laughs> and I, I guess he, from, from his perspective, he probably just didn't like the spotlight of it all. Like, you know, Oh my God, like mm. I, almost like people are being fake with making you feel special in that time, but really they don't give a shit. <laughs> like I don't actually care, but you know, I, I know think some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right um but I, I i don't know how we you know if should we do what what do you think do you think we should be bothered by things like that or um uh, is that just wasted emotional energy <laughs> no i think i think it's too big like the, the decision to make it a thing hmm. is not something that comes from like at an, an individual level this is like Mm. it's way out of an individual's reach. So, you know, within us and between between us, we could think of it whatever we want, but this is more like an institutionalized thing, right? Mm. It's, it's like if they give you... Because now, it, uh, let's flip it a little bit. Let's say instead of getting... A, a month of celebrating black history, like, you know, this has been declared somewhere. Mm. They decided we're going to make a public holiday for black history, right? Mm. Will people still go to work? <laughs> you can't. Because <laughs> the businesses yeah. are going to shut down, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, doesn't matter if you want to celebrate it or not, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's Christmas type things like, oh, I, I got to book my Christmas service. Are you Christian? I, I'm not. It's like, oh, so what are you doing celebrating Christmas? So it's like, well, nobody's working. <laughs> All the businesses are shut. So I have to go do something on Christmas so days. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so in, in that, it, it, it's enforced in that sort of way, in that it's, it's made at an institutional level and when it's an institutional level thing, you can't really negotiate. You just have to work with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and which leaves us now in a, a scenario whereby it's like it's all open to interpretation. It's like, look, you could have a good time with it. You could whinge about it. It's like, you know, and especially like you can see the performativeness of the the big the big corporations. They'll kind of go like. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it because we don't want to be the company that did not participate, that didn't participate. right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like we don't we don't want to be the company that did not have a Christmas tree during Christmas season. What are you talking about? We'll, we'll set one up. We can afford to, and then we'll take it down. Right? It's like, yeah, nobody's like, no no harm no fault. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's. Uh... <laughs> It's one of those things, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But that's because I think 
there was no consultation with, within the communities of these people who identify this way that uh, mm. should we get a month? Mm. <laughs> right? mm. should, we, should we just get a day? Or should we not do anything about this? Yeah. Or should we get a monument instead? Uh, and so yeah. I, I don't even the possibility know for that, about. right? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I, I don't even know how it came about. Um yeah, I, I, I just, I guess when it comes to corporations, you sort of just assume that um, everything they do is performative. <laughs> yeah, it's a corporation. It's, 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 it's a corporation. But, I, but in terms of when it comes to like uplifting uh, black voices, um, you know, if you if you make that pledge, we, we expect you to keep that pledge year round. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if there's someone being like, um. <laughs> Come back next year in February. <laughs> and it's like that's when we care about this. <laughs> oh my god. Right now when it right now it's not the priority. Yeah. Like, you know how like we have Christmas in December. It's kind of like that with your thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to stop the recording here. I think we've had such good fun. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for doing yeah. this with me. And no uh, we'll probably be doing some more of them uh, in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I will be linking what the... What they say like I'll be linking everything in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> in in the show notes and the video description because it's it's going on YouTube, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely. Uh, yeah, we'll go on YouTube and whatever yeah. Spotify. Every I, I intend to raid mm. all the channels. <laughs> yeah, nice. So it's going to be both podcast form and video form, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's that's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs>